Pardon the interruption. I'm Jared Ware, and I got Dan Stradamus here with me. He picked no, uh, North Carolina State to upset the Seminoles against uh, at home. So, pardon the interruption. I'm Dan Charis. Yes, Jared, I did say that. And pardon the interruption. We're live from the rec center. You can learn some yeah. interesting things here. Some interesting predictions from us. So, every if, you want, if you're watching this live from your dorm, come check us out. We'll be down here. Every blind squirrel finds a nut, and every broken clock is right twice a day. So don't get don't get ahead of yourself, oh, big boy. All right. Come on, come on. We have a bunch of topics today. We're in the rec center. This place is pretty nice. So if you haven't been over here, if you're sitting in your dorm all the time, come out here, hoop it up. Do your homework in the lounge, swim in the pool, take a shower in the shower. Uh, we got know. Zumba or something going on yeah, in here. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. All right, so it's our first Let's topic, Let's get to the Ryan. real business here. How impressive was the Patriots win? You want it? I'll, I'll go first. Go you know, ahead. there was some very nice things about this Patriots win. I mean, yeah. first of all, it's a win. You got to be happy yep. with that. But I liked Tom Brady. Guy was solid as ever. Yes. Hasn't thrown a pick since Arizona, I believe. The running game was great as usual. Wes Welker was phenomenal as usual. Things I did not like about the game, fumbles. Yes. They can't close out a team again. Scale one to ten? Did you? I didn't give a scale to one to ten. All right, we'll put it on a scale one to ten uh, so we know where About how at. excited I am about how this. How impressed? Win. How impressed? Um, probably like seven and a half. Okay. But then another thing I didn't like: the defense was pretty poor in the second half, especially Devin McCourty. That guy was. Yeah, awful. he's no good. Uh, I'm gonna put it on a scale one to ten. I'm gonna put it at a three. I don't think the Broncos are that good. Uh, I don't think we look great. Uh, in any aspect of the game, a obviously. Three. Okay, Sterling Moore gets hailed for making a great defensive play after he hey, got hey. burned for a 35-yard play. I threw that in my game been a notes. Touchdown. Demarius Thomas, a number, another fumble as he's making a big play. That guy's got to figure that out. I don't think the, like I said, I don't think the Broncos are that creative a team. We got helped out by a McGahee fumble late in the game. Uh, this really should have been a closer game. The Broncos didn't play great. Well, if the Pats could get uh, I don't think a, a close out one more third down. I mean, they had some crazy third down conversions, which is another thing. I Ridley's like got a serious fumbling. Not a serious fumbling problem, but it, it is becoming an issue here. I did like our rotation at running back. Wes Welker was obviously excellent, but where is Brandon Lloyd? Where is Rob Gronkowski? I, I still have a lot of concerns about this. There's still a lot of... A fundamental uh, concern know, with this I'm team. I'm not too concerned three. with Gronkowski and Lloyd three. because Brady's just finding the open guy right now and you're riding Brady. I'm going to put it at a three. Still, a three. That, that is secondary garbage. is still weak. Right, Though so, I did, so love, I did if, if, they, I, if they won, they would have, if, if they won big, it would have been what, a five? It would have been an eight or a nine. But, but they didn't they won win by big. ten. They didn't win big. What is big in here? Which, which big? Big is like 35 points. That's oh, a big win in well, football. A big win. I will so they, say though, they haven't had a big win in this whole season. I, they haven't. The Bills, I, that was not a big win. They won a big by win. what? You got to win by 35. They That's won by football. what? 34? Big wins are 35 points. Got to blow teams out. Blow I will say though, was very impressed with rookie Alfonso Den uh, Denard. If he can come in and establish himself as a cornerback, he looked good. Shutting down Eric Decker, that's a tough ask for him. Seventh round pick should have been a lot higher, but he beat up a cop the week before the draft. But Alfonso Denard, he looked good. All right, what's our next topic, Ryan? How impressive is Drew, is Drew Brees' record? Another scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to put it at about a 5. It's a new NFL. He broke Johnny Unitas' record, which will, for of all time, honestly, that's more impressive because it was a different game when Johnny Unitas played. Second compared. week we've thrown Johnny Unitas. Yeah, game Johnny U getting a shout-out. The guy deserves it. He was great. But Johnny Unitas holding that record for something like 19,000 days. Uh, that's ridiculous. In an NFL where they didn't did throw it as much. I think Jeremy it was, Lundblad? It was on first take or something oh. like that. I don't know, or Sports Center. Anyways, in an NFL where they didn't throw it as much, Breeze, I think three out of five of the last seasons, he's attempted the most, like, he has three of the most uh, highest uh, attempts per year in NFL history over the last three seasons. Not that impressed. Though I will give him credit, he does throw like three touchdowns a game. It's not like he throws one a game, usually three, four, five. So that is impressive. But the record itself, more than likely, it's going to get broken in the next yeah, three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Brady will probably break it. He's what, like, I think he's out he's like at 37. 37. Yeah. So Brady will break it. Yeah. But it's pretty impressive. Three straight seasons of throwing a no, touchdown yeah. pass. I mean, if you play fantasy, why a, don't you pick Drew Brees? This is, you can't touch the receivers. Yes, I know, I know, I know, but, I know, but if still in this NFL, you'll yeah. have a fantasy quarterback, and you're just like, yeah. way to go, buddy. Thanks for getting me six points this week. He is elite. He's an elite quarterback, but the record itself... The, the record, my Mike's, my number is going to be six and a half. Like okay. I'm right there with you. This kind of NFL, but it's still like three seasons deep, and your fantasy quarterback sucks a lot of weeks. Pretty good. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it very imp it, it impressive in today's NFL. The grand scheme of things, not so much. Okay, next topic. Are Lux Colts better than Manning Broncos? 
So what do we got? The Colts are at two and two now. Yes. Same amount of wins as last year. The Broncos have now. What, what's the Broncos record? I believe they two have three. two. Yeah, they're two and All three. All right. Well, I'm gonna still stick stick with the Broncos right here. Look, we've already talked about the Broncos this year. They played playoff teams five for the first five weeks. Okay. And their offense has been pretty pretty efficient, especially in the second half, like we saw the other day. Okay. Pey- Peyton Manning still has some has it left, and I can't trust uh, I can't trust the Colts. I obviously can't trust uh, Andrew Luck. I mean, he's a rookie, but but the Colts as a whole, not not a good team at all. And plus, they just lost their coach. Not a good team at all. They're not going to win seven games this year. So, do, are you going to tell me a seven-win team is good? Well, I'll get to my I'll get to my point when. Well, I'm going with the Broncos in there. I mean, the Colts could get six wins this year because they're in a terrible terrible division. But Manning's Broncos, I still think that they're going to win the NFC West, which is still wide open because the Chargers yeah. lost at New Orleans the other yeah. day. Uh, I actually like the Colts in this topic. I like their offense. I like Fleener. I like Dwayne Allen. I like Donald Brown. I like Andrew Luck. I like T.Y. Hilton, Reggie Wayne, Donnie Avery. The list goes on and on. This is a young offensive core that's coming together. Uh, and, and I think as the year progresses and Luck continues to develop at a, just an, a phenomenal rate right now. I mean, the guy looks like he's been in. You watch him play and you go, man, that guy's been in the league for like six years. Then you go, this is his fourth game. It's unbelievably impressive the way Luck is playing. If you have a good quarterback in this league, you're fine. Is Luck going to be a pro bowler this year? If he keeps on this rate, it's still a long season for sure. We're only four games in, but if he continues his development. Let's hold off on the pro bowl. It was sort of a tough question because you know you're going to get three guys. They're going to drop back. You'll get like the eighth or ninth string right there. So. But he could I be will, a pro bowler, though. Vince Young was a pro bowler as a rookie, and look at that guy now bankrupt. Freeney and Mathis look good coming off the edge. Aaron Rodgers wasn't comfortable at all. Those guys are old, but I think they have another good season in them. I may even – I'll give the Colts eight wins this year in the NFL. Mark it down. I think it's, they're a good team. It's not a stretch. This it's is a, a tough offense to stop. It's not Two a, tight ends, three or four great receivers. Donald Brown's a good running back. Uh, when I has also, Donald Brown ever been I also good? like Delone Carter. He's a good De- running back. Delone Carter? Delone. Is it Delone? Yeah, it's Delone. Oh. Uh, he was a, a week week a Q's, two a Q grad. He's an orange. Okay, week two, uh, fantasy 2011. Delaney Carter. Everyone was jumping at him. Delon. I think they're a good t- good team. Antoine Bethea on the backside. I like the Colts a lot. Like him a lot. Could finish second in the AFC South. Next time. Big deal. Hey, that's impressive. Are the Packers in trouble? Packers lose on a snap hook by Mason Crosby. Looked like one of my tee shots when I'm playing at Stowe Acres Country Club. That thing was awful. Never had a chance in a dome. No win. Anyways. Oof. Very, very poor performance. Ryan Eaton's go-to kicker every yeah, year. Yeah, pretty awful. He has a huge leg, too. Anyways, Green Bay, are they in trouble? Yes. Right now, only two wins, two and three at the moment. They have to play Houston next week. Houston looks like a juggernaut right now, regardless of last night's performance. They can run it. They can pass it. They can stop you running it, and they can stop you passing it. If you can do those four things, you're going to win a lot of games. Houston does that. Green Bay, no defense still. Their defense looks awful. They didn't improve on, in that department at all last year. And in all honesty, Rodgers has been awful this year. To where he set his standards, he's been unbelievably subpar. He needs to figure it out. Get the ball to 18. He's a dynamic playmaker. Can we get him the ball? Out of the backfield or out of where, where Just create how about we packages. Just, how about we just put he him can play center. quarterback. He yeah, played quarterback at, at Kentucky. Put him on the center there. Uh, I'm going to say they also are in trouble. Yeah. But two and three, I mean, they got to. Yeah. They're, they're combined. Minnesota four. ahead of them. Chicago look, ahead of them. Look, they lost three games by 13 points. Not a big stretch at all. One score games every time. Yeah. Obviously, Seattle is. And okay, uh, maybe they should be. Maybe they should be three and two right now. Seattle is what it is, but that yes, is what that but is. They can't win on the road right now, and no. their defense is atrocious. Look no, at these terrible. games: Houston, Giants, Detroit. Terrible. Those are all three tough road games. Yeah, no, if, Detroit. If Detroit, not so much. All right, give they're, they're a playoff team. Uh, Detroit. Last year they were a playoff team. Yeah, this year they That's, look awful. This year they look awful. They have been looking awful. But let's, let's be real. They're in trouble. I'm not going oh, yeah. to let you that. Give it's a, a 41 tough Tennessee. It's a tough division. Yeah. All I right. like Minnesota this year. The fighting Ryan Betancourt is looking good this I ha- year. I, in our NFL season preview, two wins for the Vikings. Adrian Peterson, oh. Percy Harvin. They have doubled that. Kyle Rudolph. You got to oh, love big Minnesota. Deal. Kyle Rudolph Ford. got Betancourt, what, two points this week? No, he had a touchdown, oh. Ned. No, there's no way I'm going to get Oh, two points last week. Yeah. Rudolph points. had a touchdown. Yeah, two points last week. Next topic. Notre Dame Fighting Irish grad Cal Rudolph. Anyways. Who are you rooting for in the MLB playoffs? Did you start the last topic off? I already forgot. Uh, I think you did. So you want me yeah, to take, take this it. one? Yeah, yeah, All definitely right. did. There's a team in each series that I'm rooting for, and I'll give you the rundown. Okay. Baltimore Yankees. Obviously, I got to go Baltimore. Did it start with a whisper? 
Anyways, go ahead. Baltimore, Dan Duquette. We have a great track, great soundtrack on in the background. I, hope I we're dislike picking this up. Neon Trees very much. Anyways. Baltimore, Ned. Dan Duquette. Oakland and uh, yep. the Tigers. Gotta go Oakland. The Paw Sox. Out West. My boys. Moss. Gutierrez. Dan Duquette. Redding. Crisp. Dan Duquette Jr. is the uh, station manager at BC's station. All right. St. Louis, Washington, I'm going cards. Uh, excuse me, I'm going Nats. I'm anti-cards. They always seem to get yeah. in the playoffs, always seem to win a World Series. I'm just like, this is yeah. awful. I think so, the Cardinals are the team that every man over 65-year-old, like, they love the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinals is just a Midwest. You're a Cardinals fan. The Midwest hub is Cardinal City. Okay, so then Cincinnati playing the Giants. I'm going Cincy because my boy Bronson, he's is he still playing the guitar? He's still guitar. He's still jamming. Up. Anyways, um... Who am I rooting for in the playoffs? I only have one team. The, the fighting Scott Van Pelts, the Baltimore Orioles. Just because Buck Showalter is a lot like Nick Saban in the sense that he never looks excited about anything, which is hilarious to uh -huh. me. Like, He's got these, the hands in the pockets yeah, the whole time. Yeah, you get these managers who just win like a great one-run game to win the wild card, like the one-game wild card or whatever, even though that probably didn't happen. And they're just like, okay, well, we're already on to the next game. Dude, be excited for like three minutes, then you can start talking about next game. I want to see Buck win this World Series. Plus, it's Baltimore. Baltimore, they have Cal Ripken doing broadcasts yes. for the this Yankees. The TBS series. broadcast team is, the, T the TBS broadcast team is awful. Oh, it's terrible. It's can great. You... It's great when they show like EJ, Wells, Eck, and Cal in studio midseason. Everyone has a shirt and a blazer on, and a tie, and you just pretty much got this on Wells. This the shirt. This is the new normal on TV now. Is the no tie, top button undone. Milka Tolich told me today I need to starch my collars to get him to stand up straight. So I'm gonna start doing that. I think Tommy Lima did that with his shirt. So, uh, what do we what do we got, Ryan? What do we got our next topic? <laughs> Where we start your shirt. ALDS and the NFL. All right, so we got we got the Orioles, Yankees. We have the Nationals and Look St. At my Louis. Notes. Look yeah, at my let notes me get right the there. notes here. We got Washington and the Cards and Cincy. Who is Cincy playing? Cincy's playing the Giants. Uh, what's the other? I'm missing Oakland and... Buddy, St. Louis, Washington. All right. That just goes to show how much who baseball you got I've watched. Who you got winning? I like the Orioles. I like the Nationals because... Actually, no, I want the Nationals to lose because they sat down Steven Strasburg. I want them to say, like, oh, yeah, that was an idiotic move by us. So I have them losing. Uh, they're playing St. Louis. I think St. Louis is going to win anyways. And I like St. Louis because um, there's an actor who I can't think of right now who's a St. Louis fan... Uh, John Hamm from Mad Men is a fan of St. Louis, so I'll, I'll give St. Louis that win. I also want Oakland to win because Brad Gilbert is an Oakland fan, and the more <laughs> Ned Gilbert <laughs> tweets we get about the A's, the better we're all for. This, I'm missing the one last, I don't remember. This is the last qu category you're going out with. Who you're rooting for? It's who's going to win. Well, no, I, that's who I think is going to win. Oh, is this who you want the, to win? Who I want to win is who well, I Oakland's think Oakland's down win. to nothing. Paul they Sox, will come back. Pawtucket Red Sox. Ned West. Gilbert will go to the games and inspire them. All right, so the team's at a two up right now. Tigers, Reds, they're both going to oh, win. Oh, I'm going to take – did I pick against the Reds? You didn't pick, I don't think. But I just took Give over. Give me the Reds because Kirk Herbstreet's a Reds fan. All right, so whoever's a celebrity and is a fan. Or any anyone I like. All right, so let me go right here. Reds, Tigers, win-win. I'm going to go Nats because I just don't like the Cardinals at okay. all. And then I'm going to go – Baltimore, because I don't like the Yankees at all. Okay. How's that? Yeah, well, I'm fine with that. That topic just... Yeah, like, I'll be the first one to tell you when a topic didn't work for me. That didn't work for me. It was, I, I had it. TV is a, is a fickle business. Any who's. Should Brad Friedel have started for Tottenham? I want in on this one right now. I know a little bit of something about this. I'm a Tottenham supporter. First of all, I want to say the hiring of Andres villas Boas makes no sense to me right now. Anyway, should Friedel have started? He had a consecutive streak of, like, over 300 consecutive Premier League games. The game before that, ten. before that, they go to Old Trafford against Manchester United, win 3-2. to two. Friedel was excellent. The next week at Aston Villa, they go with Hugo Lloris, who in his own right is 25 years old, a great young goalkeeper, France number one, cost him 10 million pounds in the summer. So obviously he's going to take over for Friedel at some point, more than likely during the offseason. This year it will become official and Friedel will probably get shipped out. Oh, yeah. But someone will oh, take yeah. a risk on him because he's 41 healthy and he still looks pretty good. But you got to stick with Friedel here. Stick with your team that's one that they're third or fourth in the league right now. They have about 14 points. They're four, uh, five points back at Chelsea. My question is who starts 
after the international break when Tottenham hosts Chelsea. Huge Premier League clash. Clash. We're going to get Ian. We're going to get Mac on a Saturday morning. It's going to be nuts. you got to start Friedel on that one. Stick with your team. Stick with the, the lineup that helped you beat Manchester United. The, very, the very, interesting, very interesting point you just made, Jared, is who's going to start that Chelsea It's got to be Friedel. I, w I hope it's Friedel. And look, you just got three straight wins out of Friedel. Yeah. Especially that one at Manchester and United, which, by the way, another yank drop. Clint Dempsey scored the game winner. Yes, that game. he did. So you got three straight wins out of Friedel. Quickly. But obviously you're going to start Loris. Friedel right doesn't there. have to play any international games over the next week. Loris is France's that number one. That guy hasn't He'll played play in two. 10 years, and he, he's, a, he's from America, but he has an English accent He does now. now. He has a really bad Scouse accent. Well, okay. that's a little liver puddly in action right there for you, Scouts hats, accent. We're going global on this show, if you didn't know. All right, what do we got for our next topic, Ryan? Should Josie Alvator get a USA call up? You All right, so the roster came out yesterday. Yeah. Interesting, who, interesting. Who was going to get the call up? We figured Josie Alvator because pretty much he's the best striker in the United Eight States. goals in seven games in, Eight the, goals in the Dutch in the Dutch league, which Lead, leads it. Joint, joint leader. He definitely should have got the call up. This is the thing, though. Jurgen loves his uh, his German-born players, yeah. which isn't really yep. any at striker. I mean, Terrence Boyd was left off this roster, yep. if I recall correctly. And he's playing well in Austria. So, I mean, obviously Hercules Gomez is going to get the start there. And then there's four other forwards. The forward depth on the U.S. is absolutely terrible, and Josie Altidore is pretty much your best forward. Yeah. But he showed up out of shape last year, I yeah. guess, so now we all hate him. Yeah, there's some tension off the pitch right now between Altidore and Klinsman, but Let's be honest, the USA, we haven't had a striker score a goal in the World Cup in almost eight years. Our 2002, Brian our, McBride. Our, so that's a 10 years right now. Our strikers, as of right now, all right, Hercules Gomez, he barely plays for Santos Laguna right now. So you're going to have a guy who barely plays week in, week out, compared to a guy who's 22 years old. Let's, and let's remember about Josie. He's 22. He moved over to Europe at 18 wasn't successful when he first moved over at 18 years old, but there aren't many Americans at that age who can even get an offer. Right now, he's tearing it up in the Dutch division. More than I wouldn't be surprised right now if Liverpool, with American owners, don't try and swoop uh, to try and grab him in January because they need a striker and he's been excellent. The big thing is he That'd doesn't. Be interesting. The huge thing is that he doesn't work when he's not on the ball. But I watched a great piece of build-up play with AZ where he scored a few weeks ago, and he was the focal point in their build-up. Bring him in now because he's going to be playing. Come the World Cup in yes. 2014. Let's get he's our not World in the Cup squad lineup. ready now. Yeah, if he's not in the starting lineup for the World Cup, how do you Cup, leave eight goals in seven games off a roster? And, and with, another thing, Klinsman stresses. Who's Alan Gordon? We want, uh, I don't know, but Klinsman stresses playing for your club team. If if and Gomez doesn't goal, play for his club bench. team, and Altidore is killing it with his club team, you'd think he'd that get the one call. free kick goal. That is, it's. Oh, if you score a goal for the United States, uh, it's you got yeah, the next three calls. He's close. He's close in my book to being. I hate him. Close. Close. Okay. I haven't liked him, but I haven't. Hated if we him. lose one of these two games, he's on the. I'm just going. I hate him. Next topic. <laughs> I'm just going. I hate him. What's your U.S. men's national team lineup? Why don't you I'll go first, this, I'll start this one off. So I had my lineup set up uh, before the show started. Just found out that Breck Shea and Landon. I don't ever want to play for the United States national team ever again. Donovan is out with another phantom injury. He's always sick. A knee injury. He has the flu, or he, he has a Saturday cold, night. or he broken nail or did something where he can't play for the U.S. men's national team. What I'm saying right now, Landon, don't come back. We don't want you. Sorry. I want you. Let's keep Let's keep building. I'm a fan. I want These are huge games, and he can't play these games. Unbelievable. He didn't play against either of those Jamaica games. It feels like we haven't seen him in the lineup with Dempsey in the last three years. Well, we, we but finally I bet, got to see it against Scotland. I bet come like the 20, 30 minutes. 2014 World Cup, yeah, I'm really invigorated to play for the United States, all this stuff. Garbage. But my lineup. 4-3-3, Howard in goal, obviously. He's unbelievable. It's obvious. Tearing it up. Cameron and Goodson together as, as the center backs. Like Cameron, think Goodson's good, and that's going to be the center back pairing in 2014. Get them on the pitch together. Fabian Johnson at left back. He's eh, probably, Goodson's a stretch. He's probably our best attacking option right now, in all honesty. Down the left, he's unbelievable. Chirondal at right, veteran, great right back. My, mid, my midfield three, Bradley, the furthest forward, Danny Williams behind him, as well as Maurice Edu. Edu and Williams, you're holding midfielders. They're going to have to have cover for Fabian Johnson when he gets wide left. My front three, Dempsey wide left, but he can cut inside, give Fabian, Fabian Johnson room okay. to attack down the flank. Gomez, the main striker, doesn't bring anything to the table other than he's willing to run for 90 straight minutes, whatever. Graham Zussi had a pretty good game against Jamaica at home, and they're playing in Kansas City, his home park. Give him the start. Oh, He'll be oh, fired you got to give him the start there. 
Well, my lineup is, is pretty similar. I got a lot of the same faces. Howard and goal. I got a 4 2 2 going right here, okay. which I'm a huge fan of because it works you for like the two striker. And they used, like they used the... to do it with Bob Bradley, and it was. Like, they were winning games. I like five in midfield. You got to have at least two strikers. If you don't have two strikers, I hate your lineup. If you have enough techni okay. technical skill. Center backs, Cameron Bocanegra. Okay. You didn't have the captain in the lineup, did you? Goodson. Goodson, Cameron, those two are going to be the center back. Who's the captain without Bocanegra? Um, I'm giving it to Bradley. I okay. think Michael Bradley okay. is, the, is the man in this Trundle team. Trundle Johnson on the, on the wings. Yeah. On the wings, I had Shea and Donovan in midfield. Same but here. i got to go Zuzi Clayton. Clayton. I really dislike throwing. not a I really dislike throwing. Not yeah, a he, played, he played there. If anything, he'll come in. Yeah, I have him as the first substitute I don't want him. for I, Edu. I don't want him in there. Bradley, Danny Williams in midfield. Get rid of Jermaine Jones. Get rid of uh, Kyle Beckerman. They haven't been performing. Yes, if I see Keep Beckerman on the, on the field in either of these games, that's an also another offense that will put Klinsman on the idiot and list. Then, and then strikers, two up top, Gomez, Dempsey. There's my lineup. I think I'm it's right a successful I lineup. I think I could probably manage this team to a win. I'm pretty two sure wins. this lineup right here, we would win the World Cup, except if we could get someone better than Zussi. If that was um, Donovan... But I don't want him back on the team. Anyways, predictions. What's your U.S. men's national team predictions? Two games coming up this yes. week. Two, two big huge games. games. Two big games. Two games. Huge. The U.S. Not should big, win. Huge. Two games. The U.S. Huge. should win. Two games. I think the U.S. will win. They go down to Antigua and Barbuda. If you don't know, there's 80,000 people that yeah. are from that country. U.S. four nothing win. Four nil in the cricket stadium. Okay. And then they're gonna come back. Live Strong Park, like you said. That's Kansas gonna City. be nuts. That's it's, gonna be. It's great. a great atmosphere. We're gonna get one Ian Dark. Win. We're gonna Ian Dark for that game. That's another. We also thing. get Taylor Twellman for that game. Yeah, Twell's no good. Yeah, no I was offense. just I was just trying to pick him up a little Twell, bit. But he lives you in Boston. He's sort of a Massachusetts guy, though. Even though he's from Minnesota, I treat him as a Massachusetts native. But he's got to step his game up as the color commentator. Anyways, my predictions. We go down to Antigua and Barbuda. These guys play in the second division of like American soccer on one team. It's actually kind of crazy. Yeah, I, they I should, forget the name. They should beat those guys three nothing. Handle Antigua Bar and Barbuda and Barbuda. Send a message that we're that we mean business. And then at home, Livestrong Park is going to be crazy. That's a town that really embraces their soccer. You know, it's Kansas City, Kansas, not yeah. Kansas City, Missouri. They really embrace their soccer there. They're going to be nuts. They're going to be crazy. Hopefully, we get a great game out of Zussi at home. I'm taking a 2-1 to one win, but we go up 2 nothing. a late goal from Marco Papa for Guatemala. But we get two wins, we right the ship, and the USA men's national team in steady waters for at least a few more weeks. Okay, okay. All right, Ryan, what do we got for our next topic? Should Lindsey Vaughn be able to compete against men? So Lindsey Vaughn, she's dominated the female World Cup ski circuit. Yeah. She wants to compete against the yeah. men next uh, month in Canada when it starts back up again. Yep. Should female athletes be able to compete with the men, Jared? It depends on what sport. And then in the, when I say that, uh, I'm, I'm an equality. I'm a man about equality at my very core. I think everyone should be treated equally. So if women want to compete against men, obviously they need to go through all the qualifiers that men need to go through. I don't like cases where you get Michelle Wee and Annika Sorenstam who just walk into PJ events. I think they should have to try and Monday qualify for those events. I mean, that's the right way to do it. If Vaughn can qualify for the Men's World Cup of skiing, go ahead. It would bring some, it, the least it would do would bring some publicity to an event that I just heard of 10 seconds ago. Yeah, she's so. the most famous skier in the yeah. country. Well, remember Join Bodie? Yeah, oh yeah. That was a hoax. Did I use that word correctly? I don't think it's hoax, yeah, unless you're hoax. referring to Brady hoax. Uh, Regardless, anyway. let's, Join Bodie was a joke. Okay, so. Um, it depends on the sport for me too. Yeah. Golf, like you said, pretty much just exactly what you said. Golf, I like if you qualify. You if you it. qualify, go ahead. Like there's, if there's a Navarro lot of auto Tolova, racers. If she want to play against the men and she can qualify through the qualies, fine with no, me. No, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, auto racers. Yeah. I think they can compete with the men because I don't think it's a sport really. I don't enjoy it. We don't ever yeah. have auto racing topics on this show because yeah. we don't like it. But you um, turn left. yeah, if Lindsey Vaughn can can, can compete with the men. I say go for it. I thought Hope Solo could play professional soccer at some terrible level in the United States with the boys. Maybe. A goalie? A goalie yeah. can do it. Yeah. Now, I know LeBron, I think, said, I think it was LeBron who said that girls will one day compete in the NBA. There's absolutely no yeah, way that's going to happen. Yeah, that's never going to happen. Sorry. Absolutely no way that Sorry, will happen. Sorry, LeBron. So, um, when you're talking about a league that's had, like, 10 dunks total in, like, 15 years, they and, have a long way to go. Yeah. Remember Candace, no offense Candace Parker wins the dunk contest because she can do this. No, no offense to the WNBA. It, it, was, it was essentially this. It was essentially this, folks. You got the you got the eye. I don't, I don't know if the camera's going to come on me, Ryan. There we go. I, I can see exactly. out of this eye. I can't out of this eye. 
I, and I, and, Girls win dunk contests doing that. And, and I will say the dunk total will go up once Brittany Griner gets into the league. But let's remember, even when she dunks now, if we really and she's about 10 feet tall, it's still celebrated. So. Now, now, if we really want to spice this topic up, should transgender athletes be able to compete? I'm not, I'm not touching that. I say no. I'm not touching that. Next topic. They, they compete with their own sex, their own original sex. Are the Celtics in Europe? I'm touching it. Come on, have a little fun. Go ahead. Celtics All right, so in Europe. Celtics in Europe, a good idea. I say it is a good idea. Look, okay. this team went over there in 2008, bonded. What happened? World Championship. Go over there now. This team doesn't need a bond. They have a common goal right now, and that's beating Ray Allen into a pulp. Remember Ubuntu? Yes. So stupid. We started using that at my work that week. Like the, Ubuntu? Yeah, we started using... It was like the, L, the Angolan word for like yeah, teamwork or something. It was pretty uh, bad. But yeah, I like the idea in Europe. You know, spend a few weeks with the team away from your families. Get the families out of there. I asked my dad this. What are the chances Kevin Garnett just hard fouls Ray Allen the first time Ray's in the game? Why, like why do they hate each other? Like 100? You know, you know, I want to say why do you hate each other, but then I look at a rivalry like Red Sox-Yankees today, and it's, hey man, before yeah. the game, hey man, how you doing, man? Do we have Dude, have, good luck today. Good luck today. I will yeah. not try to take you out if yeah. you're playing shortstop and I'm running a second yeah. base on a double play. So I like the little rivalry there. Good idea in Europe. I do like uh, the Seas going to Europe for two reasons. One, we get a little Brian Scalabrini, who surprisingly knows a lot about Europe European well, basketball. Remember, he played in Italy during the lockout. So they loved him. They absolutely yeah, loved yeah. him. Yeah, well, who doesn't love Scouts? I mean, he's True. a lovable character. In, in all, a big, white, redhead dude playing hoops. Italian respected, guy. Love it. Top 15 draft pick. I mean, that's ridiculous. Was he really? Yeah, he was like At 13. USC? Yeah. Anyways. Yikes. Um, I like the trip, so we get scouts and do a little scouting. Some of these European clubs, maybe you see a couple young prospects who you can pick up late in the draft, turn into diamonds in the rough. I'm all right. Uh, diamonds in the rough. I'm all right with now, that. No, the true reason for this is that the NBA is going over there to make money. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, let's well, get these yeah. teams branded Come out on. there. That's what I'm not about yeah. for, this, for this trip. It's about team building. Let's get that NBA title. Like I said, they don't need another common goal. They all want to beat Ray Allen to a pulp. I, he's not going to the hoop, or KG is going to no, the guy him. never goes. The guy only no, he's stays gonna on the wing. He's going to shoot Jays. All right, so we got our last topic here, Ryan. What do we got? What's the best part of the new rec center? Oh, there's so much new and awesome stuff here in the rec center. What is your favorite part? you got to pick one. You know, there's a lot of stuff in this rec center. I haven't even explored this entire building. No, there's we broke it down. There's a still bit mysteries at the top of the and show. secrets to be revealed. But look, we got three basketball courts out yes. there. You can play basketball anyway. You, you got can... a track out there. You can run anyway. Yep. We got weights over there. You can lift. Yep. Other places besides this building. But what I think my favorite thing is is that pool right to my left. Yeah. Look. Okay. You can't swim in every time of year unless you go indoors. Yep. We got an indoor pool here. We got people doing laps. We got a lifeguard on duty if you ever need her. Yeah. Or him. And then you got some pool basketball hoops, so if you get your friends together, two hoops, great time playing some pool basketball. We failed to mention the new upstairs cardiovascular room, which is just out of this world. You got TVs right on the top of your, of your personal treadmill. So you hop on the treadmill, you throw on ESPN, you're watching ESPN, you're running and burning calories. Does it get any better than that? That room is fantastic. Like you said, the weight room's great. The lounge that we're sitting in right now, like might be one of the coolest places on campus to hang out. This place, they, the money that went into it, well spent. This is awesome to have here. Uh, it's fantastic. And fantastic. we're hoping to do more episodes from this spot. If I had to narrow it down, I would have to say cardiovascular room. Honestly, who doesn't want their own? Everyone, especially when you're at the gym, you're on the community treadmill. They always have on the family feud, which no one wants to watch. At my gym, it's family, ESPN without sound. The one I used to go to, family feud on every time I was in there. I don't know if they had one TV channel that was only family feud. But that's what they did. You get your own personal TV. You can watch the news if you like watching the news. Sports Center. So you can put on Fuse TV if you want a little music. You forgot your iPod. Fantastic. This rec center, tremendous. We'd like to thank Don T uh, Tencher for letting us come in here and do a PTR uh, episode here. It was tremendous. We'd like to thank all the people who work at the rec center and keep it running smoothly. Those guys do a tremendous job. And we can't forget about our anchor team Obviously, staff here. Did Milka a great Tolich, job. Emily LeBlanc. Tom Lima, Ryan Bentcourt. We also got to thank yeah. Jack Werfel, who actually gave us this idea. Yes. What a what a name drop that that is. You gonna pick that name up that you just dropped, Zinger? And then also Andrew Augustus. Yeah, for, he he hooked us up in that sense. You know what it is? That's PTR. Topics up, topics down. Tip your waiters. We'll see you next Tuesday.